full of everything. Hello and welcome back to Colin the Edge World of Everything. This episode has been done completely off the cuff. We haven't got a plan. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what we're going to film. But we do know this. We're going to make an episode of Colin the Edge World of Everything. Great. So where are we? We're situated over the M62 motorway. Now the M62 motorway runs from Hull and it terminates at Liverpool. So it goes from the east of the country all the way over to the west. It also crosses the Pennine. The M62 is is the highest motorway in the country and it's a vital artery obviously it links Lancashire and Yorkshire and it crosses the Pennine it is one of the most engineered pieces of motorway in the country when it was first built this motorway it was an engineering feat in the simple fact is the actual terrain it covered it's 107 miles long it was proposed in the 1930s so the actual idea about building the M62 corridor motorway they were proposed in the 30s. The actual motorway itself opened in stages. It wasn't opened as one continuous motorway. It opened in 1976. So the M62 is quite a modern motorway. And it also incorporated a unique underfloor heating system. There were, there were grids that were placed under the carriageway. And the idea of these grids on the particular high sections of the motorway. So this, this section of the motorway behind me these are actually known as Scamondon Dam. This part of the motorway is liable to freezing and heavy snowfall. So when the actual motorway were actually built and actually opened, underfloor heating were placed under the original carriageway. Now this underfloor heating system never ever worked. It did not melt snow. It did not get the tarmac hot enough so when the snow fell it had melt. That was the entire idea of the actual proposed system and it never ever worked. And they tried for years to get the underfloor heating work to work. Obviously it was to reduce the levels of grit or salt. The, the idea of the M62 motorway was to provide a crossing, a transpennine crossing all year round 24-7 so they had to grit it this particular bridge we stood on is the highest piece of infrastructure which was incorporated into the m62 motorway and it's this bridge we all know all locals in yorkshire know this bridge and it's that big arch bridge you got to go under on the way to blackpool and we're stood on it now this is the bridge the actual place where we're actually stood is called Scamondon. And at Scamondon, something really particularly interesting actually happened because the M62 had to cross this vast valley behind me. Obviously, they've cut through this big, massive hillside here with me and they opened that into a valley. They had to cross that valley, but what they decided to do is build a large embankment to fill into the bottom of the actual valley. Now, there were a river that run down the middle of this valley and they actually had to, they had to make what is known as the Scamondon Dam. So behind me here, this is where the M62 is crossing the Scamondon Dam. So there it goes. Right, so if you look behind me at the actual carriageways, right, you'll notice that both the carriageways split and they diverge. There's a reason for this. Now what happened, what, what there is in the middle of that like split and beam, there's a little farmhouse. And when they were building the, the M62 corridor, this farmhouse was directly in the way of the road. Now, what happened is, is the constructor of the M62 motorway at the time wanted to demolish the property and get rid of it and just build M62 over the top of it and keep the actual carriageway uniform. But the farmer was resilient. The farmer would not move out of the house. And the actual farmer was a little bit deluded. The actual farmer actually thought that well, a lot of people aren't going to be using this motorway. It's not going to, he thought it wasn't going to be a busy road. What they decided to do, because this farmer won't get out of the way at motorway, motorway got out of the way at farmer. So what happened is, is motorway decided to grant farmer and they just get farmer access underneath motorway. And it's actually locally known as the little house on the prairie. At the end of the day, this motorway is going off a desolate moorland. You know, there's plenty of space on either side. So constructor just decided to do up farmer a favour and just stick him in the middle of the two uh, busy carriageways on a major artery or a motorway. So whoever lives there in our days, well, I just wish they just moved out because I can imagine it being a really noisy place to live. Can you imagine just having that motorway? This, that just going by you all day, all night, all day, all night, all day. Christmas day when you're having your, when you're having your Christmas dinner and that, and you've just got motorway just going past you all the time. It just popped into your head, wouldn't it? You know, so I wonder if anybody actually even lives there now. 
be interesting to see. I bet nobody even lives there. But it's actually one of the most famous parts of the actual M62 corridor. So there's just a little a few facts there about the M62 motorway at this high point in the Pennines here in West Yorkshire. What we're going to do now, we're going to take a look at the actual Scamenden Dam. And we're going to take a quick look at the Scamenden Dam and then take a look at some of the engineering work that actually went into the construction of the great Scamenden Dam. I'm Colin the Ed and this is Colin the Ed's World of Everything. So here we are, we've just come to another location here at Scamenden. This is the, the actual Scamenden Dam behind me. And the only reason why this reservoir is here is because of the M62 motorway. When the M62 came to this part of the world, it had to cross the actual Scamenden Valley. So what they decided to build was a thing called the Scamenden Dam. And when you're on the M62 motorway and you're crossing the Scamenden Valley, a lot of people don't even realise they're actually crossing a dam. There behind me. And the M62 is going across the actual Scamenden Valley. The other thing about the Scamenden Dam as well, when it was actually in construction, it was one of the main engineering feats. The five, six mile stretch between Ainley Top and the little house on the prairie is the heaviest engineered part of the actual entire M62 motorway project. As you can see behind me, that big massive arch bridge, right, that's over there, right, that's the bridge where we started the actual episode. Now what we've done, we've come down to the actual heart of the actual Scamenden Dam. Thousands and thousands of people every day use this dam as a means of transportation between the cities of Leeds and Manchester, right, and they don't actually realise the actual piece of infrastructure you're going over. Scamenden Dam itself holds 42 hectares of water in litres, 7,000 800 million litres of water. 7,800 million litres of water. So do you know them little like litre bottles of pop that you buy from shop, right? One litre of pop. This reservoir, when it's full, owes 7,800 million of them. So you can imagine getting all them balls of pop and just chucking them in that reservoir there. That's how many, that's how many actual bottles of pop it actually holds. So it's quite colossal really. And the only reason why it's here is because of the actual construction of the M62 motorway. So there you go, that's scamming the water for you. So what we've got here is, it's an old, basically this round concrete circle, right? It's an old. Right, and what it is, it's an overflow. Obviously, when the actual Scamenden water reaches 7,800 million litres and it carries on raining, this is going to carry on filling. If it carried on filling, then it'd flood onto M62 motorway and then you'd have a cascade of water going straight over M62 motorway and down the other side of the actual Scamenden dam itself. Now, to stop this, the Scamen all dams are filled with an overflow system. Once they get to a safe full capacity, any excess water which goes into the dam has to run off. It has to run off to stop the dam bursting its banks or, uh, in the most extreme cases, causing damage to the actual dam itself. Because obviously the dam will only be designed to, to withstand a certain volume of water. Basically, it's a pipe. That's all it is. It's a big pipe that goes straight down to the bottom of the reservoir and will overflow into the river at the other side of the actual dam itself. It'd be really good if we could get onto this gantry and walk and actually take a look down into the actual the actual drain itself, but we can't uh, for safety reasons. Obviously, there'd be one hell of a drop down into that uh, into that uh, chamber there. And I'm talking hundreds of feet. We're here at Underpass here at Scamenden Dam. And this is Underpass. What this does is it gets you underneath motorway safely. And it's got a five mile an hour speed limit on it. A five mile an hour speed limit. So all you boy racers out there that want to go driving through tunnels ridiculously fast, don't come to Scamenden Dam because there's a speed limit on it, as it says. This here motorway, we're just walking through it. And it's got loads of graffiti on the wall and it's quite urban. And I've just basically commented to, uh, to the cameraman here, I've got outside of me, that how urban it actually is. Uh, we're in the middle of Pennines and all this uh, wilderness and, uh, and nature and stuff, and we've got graffiti all over this, uh, this damn wall. Well, obviously constructing the dam, this has just been a cut and cover affair. So these concrete sections that's been built out of, they've just been placed here in situ and the, they've just been backfilled off the top to build the actual underpass itself if you can see it's actually in sections but it will cut and cover uh, underpass that will 
installed here at the scab and the dam. We're at the north side of the dam and behind me, this is the backdrop. 7,800 million litres of water at the other side of that wall and the M62 motorway. And now we've got the actual valley it crossed. This is the valley the M62 had to cross. And as you can see, it's a really, really vast valley. And the reason why they couldn't have built a concrete viaduct is for the reason of the actual, how high it would have been and the elements that the actual viaduct itself would have actually withstood and it would have been safe. So we were better to build the dam. That round circle at the bottom, that's, an, that's the overflow that we've already previously covered. So that's where the water would have ended up. And as you can see, the, the gullies are dry. If you take your notice to the actual gullies, if you can see the gullies, I can see the dry. There's no water in them gullies whatsoever. Although, obviously, as the dam becomes more fuller, these gullies will fill the water and start to flow, and they obviously fill the, feed the river. Like I said, this was the hardest piece of the M62 corridor to build, this section that you're looking at here behind me, this section here. There's the plaque here, and it actually says Scamden Water, inaugurated by Her Majesty the Queen on 14th of October 1971. Now, that means it was introduced and it was turned on in 1971. Now let's just pay attention to the decor, right? The decor, right? It's very stereotypical of the M62 motorway in the form of concrete. Hey, everything you look around you, it's concrete. That means this is made out of concrete and I love these drainage gullies here. If you look at these drainage gullies, something you'd find on the M62 motorway. Very, you'd find these at side up motorway and they're here. Obviously you've got these blocks a concrete and you've got your plaque now let me just focus to your attention to behind me we've got a compass that's on floor if you look here we've got east obviously is in that direction so that's behind us and obviously west towards manchester so now we've been to scamenden dam you know all about scamenden dam you know what you know what scamenden dam's all about so anybody who watches my documentary now will be a scamenden dam expert coming up next in the show a phone box full of books what's all that about Everything. Usually when you use a phone box, right, you use it to make telephone calls, right? Now, we know there's not many phone boxes left in England because we've all got mobile phones and mobile pieces of communication systems that fit in our pockets. So there's not much use for phone boxes. But this phone box we've come to look at today on Colin the Ed's World of Everything is actually full of books. So someone's took phone, phone book art, phone art and that, gubbins at, at actual phone box and filled it with bookshelves and it's just full of novels and stuff. So let's just take a look inside this uh, here phone box. Now this phone, bo this phone box is actually in a little village called Barnborough, which is situated just outside Doncaster. And uh, what we've done, we've come to look at this particular strange phone box that's full of books. So this is it, you know, usually you come to look at a phone box and it's just a phone box, but as you can see, it's a, it's a traditional red telephone box that you find in, in Britain. And uh, there's not many of these for actual for this, this design of phone boxes uh, that actually exist, right? But because they've all been replaced, we've all got mobile phones and this, that, and other. And but this one's just been full of books now. It's just a little bit of a strange thing, really. This this Barnborough phone box, and it's just full of books. So it's like a little library, really. And there's like there's, there's like little uh, just Jeffrey Deaver, the broken window. You know, it's. Uh, this is a, and, and this is in here. And what people do is that when they finish reading the books, they just put them in the phone box here in Barnborough. And then they say, so you can come and like, you can just have a steady read. You know, if it's raining and stuff, you think, oh God, I'm going to get caught. Oh, I haven't got an umbrella. So you can get yourself in this phone box, right? And while the storm passes over, you can just pick up a novel and just, just have a steady read. So that's just that, that's this crazy little phone box that's full of books here in Barnborough. There's a little plaque inside the phone box as well and it says uh, the Barnborough telephone box belongs to, this is who the box belongs to, this telephone box can provide a free service to the community team. Please try and make into a successful venture. It depends on the residents of Barnborough and Harlington using this facility fully, sensibly and constructively. It must, it must be self-regulating. Services provided for our sales is, is it's a book exchange. Bring unwanted books, put them on the shelves, take the book you would like to read 
always leave the shelves tidy. For any lost property you might find on the village pathways that you would like to put somewhere safe and dry for the owner to find, use the bottom shelf please. So if you find some lost property in Barnborough, this is the place to fetch it. Right, you put it on the bottom shelf as well, apparently, by all accounts, according to these instructions that are installed into this phone box. Adverts, small ads. So as you can see, there's a little pin board here. There's a little pin board here, and uh, you could have put a, a call in the ads uh, business card here, but we haven't got none today. So I think we're going to have to come back and put one in. So basically, it's, it's the villagers who are in charge of this phone box, right? And obviously, these are all unwanted books. And obviously, people can read them. So when people are done with books, they just do. put them back on the shelves. So it's a good little yeah. service, and it's free. It's a completely free, free service that's provided here in Barnbury. And it's just there in Barnbury, and it's all concealed in this uh, little... Uh, telephone box it's a really good thing it's, it's it brings community together you know it's it's it's, it's not just a telephone box it's a, it's a it's a focal point you know it's a focal point within the community it's, it's a point of interest where everyone can kind of divulge their interests it, it creates a center and it keeps the community spirit here alive in Barnborough you know people rely on this service you know it, and it's a free service it's provided by the the villagers of Barnborough here in near Doncaster South Yorkshire and it actually works you know it's a library it's a lost property service and it's an advertisement tool as well all confined in this small little telephone box I'm Colin the Head and this is Colin the Head's world of everything. So why have we come to Barnborough today? It's stage two of the Tour de Yorkshire. We had stage one yesterday on Friday and today's the Saturday and it's stage two of the Tour de Yorkshire. Anyone who doesn't know what Tour de Yorkshire is, it's our version of Tour de France. The actual route today actually comes through the little village of Barnborough near Doncaster. So what we've decided to do on Colin the Head's world of everything is film the Tour de Yorkshire as it enters Barnborough. Obviously this is not my local area so the reason why I've ended up in Barnborough is because we were a little bit late this morning, uh, a little bit late getting out of bed and getting myself sorted out for today's filming and this that and other and we were, we were five minutes late and we, we went to a little village called Upton to actually, ca to actually catch the actual uh, race there but we got caught up in traffic and the road got closed before the race actually got here so we were stuck in traffic. So then it meant a mad dash down A1, down to Mar from Barnsdale Bar, and then we ended up at Barnborough. Now we thought we, we thought we were gonna get caught up again, but we've actually got access to the actual village, right? And a double whammy worries, we got to come have a look at phone box. So what now what we're doing now, we're just waiting for the cyclists to uh, approach Barnborough from behind me. And uh, so obviously they're gonna be coming in this direction, and it's the ladies' race. This is the ladies' race we've come to see. Have we missed it? Have we missed it? No, we haven't missed it. Are you sure? Have Where's we everybody it? gone? There were like loads of people lining streets when we turned up and they're all just ask him. Piddled out. Has race been through, mate? Sorry? Has race been through? Yeah. Has it? Oh, race yeah, has been through. <laughs> so we've missed race anyway. It don't really matter. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, never mind. That's a rate debunk for Colin the Ed's world of everything, isn't it? We've missed it. I can't believe we've missed it. I can't You're believe about... we've missed it. You're about an hour late. <laughs> an hour late. We're an hour late. I told you. You missed it. Have you believe me? I thought you were having us on. <laughs> no, they've gone. <laughs> oh, we've proper, we've proper missed it now, then, aren't we? Right, so coming up next in the show, a sea wall that used to be a quarry that's in the middle of land. What's all that about? Of right, we've come to South Ensel, which is my own village, and we've come to a, a place that's locally known as Fraggle Rock. Basically, what Fraggle Rock is, it's a sea wall. The sea has, has long been since gone and retreated to the east coast. For years and years and years and years, nobody even knew, no even knew that the sea used to be here, and you know, and that. Until, until they started excavating this here quarry which is behind me. It was discovered by accident if you want to know the truth. It was completely discovered by accident. So this is what remains of a sea wall. Now, if you look around me, there's land, there's like land in that direction, land in that direction. We're in the middle of, we're in the middle of South Emsel, which is in West Yorkshire, right? So sea is roughly 60 mile away. But this is the remains of what is the sea wall. 
So what we're going to do now on Colin Dead's World of Everything, we're going to take a quick explore. We'll get a little bit of information about it and just give you a few facts. Right, South Enfield is situated on a belt of magnesium limestone that runs irregularly through the northern England from the South Shields to Nottingham. The rock is Dalomite limestone, which is rich in magnesium car carbonate and is part of the Cade Cadeby Foundation. It was formed about 255 million years ago. So 255 million years ago, this belt of rock was formed. Near the end of the, the Perineum period the ge the, of the geological history at the time, the area was basketed in tr tropics of what is now North East England and was submerged beneath an almost tideless and very warm inland sea. So it was an inland sea, basically, that existed here in South Emsel. It was an inland sea, uh, which which extended eastwards to the area that is now that is now Holland, Germany, and uh, Poland. This sea, which lay in the desert region, is now as is known as the Zestian Sea. So obviously, this is Emsel, right? This is a stony, sandy desert, right? We've got York here. We've got all. So all this area here, we're all underwater. Basically what this is, is a belt of magnesium limestone. Magnesium limestone, you'll heard that before in the videos. Obviously the local tunnel bores through like magnesium limestone. And that magnesium limestone will have been the same part of this magnesium limestone, as I said, the same belt, because it's been on the same lay of the land. So we were a sea, so South Emsel used to be underwater, basically. It was an inland sea. Right, so how it was found, they dug the quarry, the quarry had been used, and what they were doing, they were, they were doing refuse, they were backfilling it with household refuse, so they were doing landfill. And it was discovered by accident, well, this sea quarry, this was in 1966. And in 1977, it was a national geological site. So what we're gonna do now, on calling the Ads World of Everything, we're gonna take a look at this old sea wall that exists here in, in South Emsel, West Yorkshire. Right, so we're uh, we're just here. It's, it's it's locally known as Fraggle Rock to locals. Uh, obviously, it's called South Hamstall Quarry, but we 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 as children used to call it Fraggle Rock. And then most most youngsters, or people who've grown up in the area, will have spent time around this rocky outcrop here in the, in South Hamstall. And uh, there's not really that much to see, but it is a, a, a place of national geological interest, really. And it's the best example of this sort of sea wall that actually exists in Yorkshire. So this is, this is it, basically. And all it is, it's just a big piece of magnesium limestone. That's all it is. Well, in summer, you can't get down here. It overgrows. If you look at the actual rock face itself, it's, it's been battered by nature. You can obviously see it's been at some point in its life. It's been underwater. Obviously, it's been backfilled. This this quarry used to be a lot deeper than this. And the, if you look behind us, the I, this 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 quarry, it's on an embankment. There's an embankment, and they were backfilling back to it. So this backfill would have come back, and eventually they'd have, they'd have probably turned it back into fields. But there used to be a really deep quarry here. So there will be areas where it's been machined off and blown apart. But there is areas where the rock's been left. And you can see where the actual the sea used to be. So this this was all in the water. It was a platform. It was a platform that was stood up in what in in this inland sea that existed. And uh, this is what's left. When it when it was discovered in 1966, you know this was this was a national conservation site. It was it was a, it was a site of national geological interest. There are archaeologists crawling all over this. This uh, this piece of rocky outcrop here in South Emsel. So basically, basically the, the coast was the Pennines, and it proved that there used to be sea here. So yeah, it's just a little bit about this little sea wall. It's uh, yeah, it's all right. Oh, all, all that happens here nowadays is just kids come and rock climbing, youngsters come and get boozed up, and uh, she uses it as a little bit of a recreational and social ground. I'm Colin the Ed, and this is Colin the Ed's world of everything. Episode two, season two. Bye. Calling the end will the man be thing.